going to bring you into the mess because we're gonna talk about why you need to tear your pantry out. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. It's such a mess, but it must be done. Here we go. We are tearing out our entire kitchen, throwing things out, Guys, we're getting new appliances and making things happen in our 1870 old farmhouse. But today I said, we've got to start tearing down shelves, putting in new shelves, and it's time to go through the canned goods. I have put this off and put this off and put this off. And it's really interesting because when you start bringing this stuff out, it brings a lot to mind, okay? So we're gonna talk about these main points and why Right as we move into 2020, or any time, frankly, it's time to get your pantry in order. Okay, ideally, you are going to be canning if you are moving into this lifestyle or not. I don't care where you live and what you do. If you choose to try to be a homemaker, somewhat of a homesteader, the main thing in your situation is going to be you're going to learn to can. Try to learn to can. Doesn't mean you can everything, but it's an important skill for you to know, to relearn if you haven't done it in a long time, and to teach your kids, okay? This is the ultimate survival, is learning how to preserve your food, right? That's why we homestead. But here's the deal. There's ins and outs on this deal. I have shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of stuff. And in order to make room for the new stuff, you gotta eat through the old stuff or you gotta throw away the old stuff. Well, you're gonna have leftovers. You're gonna have items that you didn't get to. You might have some items that you forgot or was mis... How did I not make my way to this can, uh, this jar of my dilly beans? They're my favorite, okay? So notice something here. I want you to pay attention. Notice there's only one jar of dilly beans. However, there's about 12 of the cinnamon pears. We need to talk about that important factor in just a second, but here's the first deal. Lesson one, we're past expiration. Technically, you should eat your way through your canned goods that you home canned yourself in 12 months. Now, do we do that? We should. Obviously, I didn't. Now, I'm not going to argue if it's, if I canned something in September of 2019 and it's October of 2020, a month or so, I'm probably not going to sweat that. But the important thing is, is that you understand what's recommended is technically 12 months. So try to stick to that, okay? So, in order to make sense and to be healthy about canning and knowing the, uh, the most important factor is understanding your expiration dates. And it is highly recommended that you look at the whole notion and the whole guideline of one year. You should date your jars on top. I do it with a Sharpie, your lids right there. See how there's no rings? Just the actual physical lid. You can see that this was done September 1st, 2017. It's going on three years old now. Time to make a decision. Okay, lesson number two here. It's not just about safety, that's first, but what, look, at, look at what I said. I've got grapes. I had a lot of grapes. <laughs> we have a lot of grapes. I need to rethink about how many grapes and how much grape juice and grape jam that I make. Should I gift it more? Should I give them more? Help other homesteaders out because clearly I'm not eating and drinking as much of it as I produce. Something to think about. Something's got to give there because I don't want to waste it. So there's a lesson there also. In addition to that, there's only one jar of dilly beans. Somebody really likes dilly beans. So what that means is, is you need to go in every year and look at what are you eating? What are you spending your time canning? Why in the world would you stand around for days and days 
evenings and evenings canning items that frankly are only going to go to waste. Nope. Third point here that you need to think about. This all translates to how you spend your time and money. In that is your garden. Okay, why would you spend your time canning something that you may not eat that much of? Or not only that, why in the world would you grow something if you don't end up eating it? This is what I tell people. If you don't wanna eat fermented Tommy Toe tomatoes, then don't do that, okay? Think about realistically, what does your family eat? To have a little bit of something is okay. To have a lot, maybe not. So in addition to point three, here's what I want you to think about. We do like to have certain things on hand. Maybe you're not a big corn eater. Maybe your husband is diabetic and can't have a lot of corn, but you do want some. Would it be smarter for you to go to the Mennonites who grow beautiful non-GMO corn and buy you a nice little bushel and put away some in the freezer, put away some in the dehydrator, maybe put a little bit back in the canning jars instead of you growing half an acre of corn that's only going to go to waste. Now, if you have animals and different things like that, you find out just like I do, there really isn't any waste if you're smart about it. But my point is, think about realistically what you eat. That translates into what should you grow? Okay, so I have gone through my harvest rack, taken out items that we have not eaten. I want you to notice that, look here, all of these lids have stayed on. That is a good thing right there. You do not want to store your goods with your rings around and on your jars. We've done videos on that, the no-no, put a ring on it, all of that. You want to take those off. You want to store your items not having the actual rings on, okay? And when you pop these off, you definitely want to throw those lids away in the trash, unless you're gonna reuse them for just storing some dry items and marbles and buttons and things like that, that's up to you. But don't ever reuse these lids to actually can again. I love these little toppers, aren't they cute? I love them, love them, love them, love them. All right, listen guys, right now is the time. We're past Christmas. I hope you had a fabulous Christmas and I'm gonna wish you a happy new year coming up here in a few days. But listen, right around the corner after that, you start getting your seed catalogs and chick days are coming. But if you're gonna start looking at growing your 2020 garden, understand now what you do. What is your habit? What do you waste? What do you not? So you can be smarter and more prepared into making better decisions for you, your time in your garden and your homestead for 2020. We're ready for it. We'll see you on the next video.